Welcome to Ezika Academy YouTube channel. In this session of Ezika Academy tutorial, I want to examine container accounts. If you are coming across my lecture for the first time, please help me to like the video, share it with others, and subscribe so that you don't miss my upcoming videos. If you are a returning subscriber, I say thank you for being part of the channel. So, what do we mean by container? Container is anything in which goods are packed for distribution and sales. Anything in which goods are packed for distribution and sales. So, some of these containers are returnable, while others are not returnable. This is an example of container. This is not returnable. So, once you consume its content, then you don't need to return them. This is for super glue. You don't need to return it after consuming its content. The match boss, you don't need to return it after consuming its content. Even these items, you don't need to return them after consuming their content. These are all example or examples of non-returnable container. But for a returnable container, after consuming the mineral, the, the, the coke or Fanta, then you will need to return the bottle. Then for month, you will need to return the bottle after consuming its content. So the bottle of coke or malt are examples of returnable container. So what are the types of container? Types of container. Based on my illustration, we have two types of container. We have returnable container, returnable container, and non-returnable returnable container, and the non-returnable container. So I've told you anything in which goods are packed for distribution and sale. It's said to be container. Or you can say container is anything in which goods are contained. So, non-returnable container. So, non-returnable, as the name implies, you don't need to return them. So, these are containers that are not to be returned by customers after consuming the goods. The containers that are not to be returned by the customers after consuming the goods. Example, then we have the the packet of this marker, so you don't need to return it. And this one, the match bus is an example of non-returnable container. And even this uh, spa glue container, you don't need to return them. The this can, the empty can of months, you don't need to return them. So they are all example or uh, examples of non-returnable container. The value of the non-returnable container is usually low. Because the value of those containers are very low, so that is why the cost of those containers are usually built into the selling price of the product. I've told you the value of, of non-returnable container are usually low. As a result of this, the cost of the container is usually built into the selling price of the item. You normally build the cost of those containers into the selling price of the item. That means the cost of, the, of all these containers the already form part of the selling price of the item. So that is for non-returnable container. But for returnable container, returnable, that means there are containers that are to be returned after consuming the content in it. So returnable containers are containers that are expected to be returned within a specified period after consuming its content. Just the, this bottle of mud is an example of returnable container. You are expected to return the bottle after consuming the content. This bottle of Fanta, you need to return it after consuming the content. So that is the, these are examples of returnable container. Returnable container are very expensive. All these containers, they are very expensive. Building the cost of the container into the selling price of the product will make the product to, to be too expensive for the consumers. If the selling price of this bottle if it's form part of the content in it, then it will make the minerals or the mud to be too expensive. That is why the cost of this container, cost of the bottles, doesn't form part of the selling price of the product. That is for returnable 
container. Returnable container will be categorized into two. Returnable container will be categorized into two. We have returnable container charged out. Returnable container charged out. And then we also have returnable container not charged out. We have returnable container charged out and returnable container not, not charged out. I'll be starting with returnable container not charged out. Returnable container not charged out is the container in which charges are not made on the customers when containers are sent to them. Customers are not being charged for those containers when the products or when the containers or when the goods are sent to the customers. Customers are not charged for those containers when goods are sent to them, when the containers are sent to them. I want to know that if the customers, however, retain the container, if the customers retain the customer, uh, the container, if they refuse to return them, that means the customer, is, uh, the container is deemed to have been retained by the customers. If the customer or customer fails to return the container, that means such container have been retained by the customer. If the customers have ever retained the container, the value of the container retained will be debited to the account of the customers. So if the customer retained the containers, then the value of that container, you debit it to the account of the customers. Please take note of that. Take note of that. The moment of container not start out, uh, accounted for in container inventory or inventory account. The moment in container not charged out. The moment in container not charged out are uh, accounted for in container inventories account. Remember, we are dealing with returnable container not charged out. Returnable container not charged out. Let me give you the format for this. Accounting for returnable container not charged out is a straightforward one. It's more straightforward than returnable container charged out. So now we open the container inventory account. Container inventory account. Container inventories account. You have the debit side, and then you call have the credit side. The debit side, the credit side. You start with the opening inventory. Opening inventories. Both the one in warehouse, opening inventories in warehouse, and the one with customers in warehouse. Opening inventory in warehouse, you debit it. And the one with customers, opening inventory with customers, you debit it as well. Then, you now debit container purchased or produced where the product are made. Debit container purchased. It will be purchased where the product are bought and where they are manufactured. You have produced. You debit container produced. We are the product are manufactured by the firm. Then at the credit side, you have the closing inventory. Closing inventories. Both the one in warehouse, in warehouse. And the one with customers, with customers. The difference 
between the two sides will be container retained by customers. Container, container retained, container retained by customers. This will be a balancing figure. Balancing figure. That is the difference between the two sides. Remember, I've told you the movement in container not charge out uh, accounted for in container inventories account. That is, it will be debited to the account of the customers. So you will now, remember you have credited the con uh, container inventories account. Then you now debit the customer's account. So that is the movement. So the total of the debit side is this. The total of the credit side. So you have closing inventory brought down both the one in warehouse and the one with customers customers so you brought down what you have as carried down here you brought it down so that is the format for container inventories account that is where uh, that is when you are dealing with returnable container not charged out. Example, amount in pounds sterling. Source of containers on 1st of January 20x is 200. Containers bought during the year 5,600. Source of container, containers at 31st December 20x is 600. Required. Show the container accounts for the year in the December 31st, 20x. I have the solution to the question. Solution. So you have container account. Container accounts. If you like, you can put container inventory accounts. So you have the debit side and the credit side. I'm wanting pound sterling. So you have, you start with opening inventory or opening stocks. Opening inventories. The opening inventories given is 200. That is the one as our first of January 20X. That amounted to 200. Container purchased. Container purchased. The value of container bought, container bought during the year, 5,600. Another word for bought is purchased. We have 5,600. 5,600. Five thousand six hundred. At the credit side, you have the closing inventory or closing stock. Closing inventories or closing stocks. And the closing inventory is about to six hundred. Six hundred. Now, the total of the debit side will be five thousand eight hundred. 5,800. If you subtract 600, no, at the credit side you have 600. Total is 5,800. If you subtract, subtract 600, you'll be left with 5,200. That is, that difference will be close to manufacturing account. Manufacturing accounts. Or you can put container retained by customer. That is balancing figure. You can put manufacturing account or you put container retained by customers. Balancing figure. The balancing figure is 5,200, the difference between the two sides. So what you have as your closing inventory will be brought down to the next period. Balance brought down, which is 600. So that is the solution to the question. I will stop this video here. In my next video, 
I will examine the returnable container tag out. Please make sure you drop the love emoji. Like the video, also share it with others. Thanks for watching, Ezekiel.